And I want to talk about uh, taxes. Uh, the fundamental difference between the two of you concerns the wealthy. Secretary Clinton, you're calling for a tax increase in the wealthiest Americans. I'd like you to further defend that. And Mr. Trump, you're calling for tax cuts for the wealthy. I'd like you to defend that. And this next two-minute answer goes to you, Mr. Trump. Well, I'm really calling for major jobs because the wealthy are going to create tremendous jobs. They're going to expand their companies. They're going to do a tremendous job. I'm getting rid of the carried interest provision. And if you really look, it's not a tax. It's really not a great thing for the wealthy. It's a great thing for middle class. It's a great thing for companies to expand and when these people are going to put billions and billions of dollars into companies and when they're going to bring two and a half trillion dollars back from overseas where they can't bring the money back because politicians like secretary clinton won't allow them to bring the money back because the taxes are so onerous and the bureaucratic red tape so what is so bad so what they're doing is they're leaving our country and they're believe it or not leaving because taxes are too high and because some of them have lots of money Money outside of our country and instead of bringing it back and putting the money to work because they can't work out a deal to and everybody agrees it should be brought back instead of that they're leaving our country to get their money because they can't bring their money back into our country because of bureaucratic red tape because they can't get together because we have a pre we have a president that can't sit them around a table and get them to approve something and here's the thing Republicans and Democrats agree that this should be done. Two and a half trillion. I happen to think it's double that. It's probably five trillion dollars that we can't bring into our country, Lester. And with a little leadership, you'd get it in here very quickly, and it could be put to use on the inner cities and lots of other things, and it would be beautiful. But we have no leadership. And honestly, that starts with Secretary Clinton. All right, you have two minutes on the same question to defend tax increases on the wealthiest American Secretary Clinton. I, I have a feeling that by the end of this evening, I'm going to be blamed for everything that's ever happened. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> jo you know, just, just, just join, uh, join the debate by uh, saying more crazy things. Now, let me it, say it, There's nothing crazy is about not letting our companies case. bring their money it, back into okay, their this country. Is, this is uh, Secretary Clinton's two minutes, yes. please. Yeah, well, let's start the clock again, Lester. Um, we've looked at your tax proposals. I don't see changes in the corporate tax rates or the kinds of proposals you're referring to that would cause the repatriation, bringing back of money that's stranded overseas. I happen to then you support didn't read that. It. I, happen to, I happen to support that in a way that will actually work to our benefit. But when I look at what you have proposed, you have what is called now the Trump loophole, because it would so advantage you and the business you do. You've proposed a, an name? approach that ever, has a that $4 this is, sorry, this billion is dollar tax minutes. benefit for your family. And when you look at what much, you are how proposing, much for my family? it is, Lester, as much? I said, trumped up, trickle down. Trickle down did not work. It got us into the mess we were in in 2008 and nine. Slashing taxes on the wealthy hasn't worked, and a lot of really smart, wealthy people know that. And they are saying, hey, we need to do more to make the contributions we should be making to rebuild the middle class. I don't think top-down works in America. I think building the middle class, investing in the middle class, making college debt-free so more young people can get their education, helping people refinance their tax their, their debt from college at a lower rate. Those are the kinds of things that will really boost the economy. Broad-based, inclusive growth is what we need in America, not more advantages for people at the very top. Mr. Trump, we're talking... Typical politician, all talk, no action, sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen. Our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton, have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. Now, look, we have the worst revival of an economy since the Great Depression. And believe me, we're in a bubble right now. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And we better be awfully careful. And we have a Fed that's doing political things. This Janet Yellen of the Fed, 
the Fed is doing political by keeping the interest rates at this level. And believe me, the day Obama goes off and he leaves and he goes out to the golf course for the rest of his life to play golf, when they raise interest rates, you're going to see some very bad things happen because the Fed is not doing their job. The Fed is being more political than Secretary Clinton. Mr. Trump, we're talking about the burden that Americans have to pay, yet you have not released your tax returns. And, and the reason nominees have, have released their returns for decades is so that voters will know if their potential president owes money to, who he know, owes it to, and any business conflicts. Uh, don't okay. Americans have a right to know if there are any conflicts of interest? I don't mind releasing. I'm under a routine audit, and it'll be released. And as soon as the audit's finished, it'll be released. But you will learn more about Donald Trump by going down to the federal elections, where I filed a 104-page, essentially financial statement of sorts, the forms that they have. It shows income. In fact, the income, I just looked today, the income is filed at $694 million for this past year. $694 million. If you would have told me I was going to make that 15 or 20 years ago, I would have been very surprised. But that's the kind of thinking that our country needs. When we have a country that's doing so badly, that's being ripped off by every single country in the world, it's the kind of thinking that our country needs because everybody... Lester, we have a trade deficit with all of the countries that we do business with of almost $800 billion a year. You know what that is? That means who's negotiating these trade deals? We have people that are political hacks negotiating our trade deals. The IRS ha says an audit me. of your taxes, uh, it's, you're perfectly free to release uh, your taxes during an audit. And so the question, does the public's right to know outweigh your personal... Well, I told you, I will release them as soon as the audit. Look, I've been under audit almost for 15 years. I know a lot of wealthy people that have never been audited. I said, do you get audited? I get audited almost every year. And in a way, I should be complaining. I'm not even complaining. I don't mind it. It's almost become a way of life. I get audited by the IRS. But other people don't. I will say this. Uh, we have a situation in this country that has to be taken care of. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release, I will release my tax returns. And that's against my lawyers. They say, don't do it. I will tell you this. No, in fact, watching shows, to reading the papers. Almost every lawyer says, you don't release your returns until the audit's complete. When the audit's complete, I'll do it. But I would go against them if she releases her So email. it's negotiable? It's not negotiable. No, let her release the email. Why did she delete 33,000? Well, I'll emails? let her ask that, but let me just uh, admonish the audience one more time. There was an agreement. We did ask you to be silent, so it would be helpful for us. Secretary Clinton. Well, I think you've just seen another example of bait and switch here. Um, for 40 years, everyone running for president has released their tax returns. You can go and see nearly, I think, 39, 40 years of our tax returns, but everyone has done it. We know the IRS has made clear there is no prohibition on releasing it when you're under audit. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? And I think there may be a couple of reasons. First, maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. Second, Maybe he's not as charitable as he claims to be. Third, we don't know all of his business dealings, but we have been told through investigative reporting that he owes about $650 million to Wall Street and foreign banks. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. And I think probably he's not uh, all that enthusiastic about having the rest of our country see uh, what the real reasons are, because it must be something really important, even terrible, that he's trying to hide. And the financial disclosure statement, they don't give you the tax rate. They don't give you all the details that tax returns would. And it just seems to me that 
This is something that the American people deserve to see, and I have no reason to believe that uh, he's ever going to release his tax returns because there's something he's hiding. And we'll guess, we'll keep guessing at what it might be that he's hiding. Uh, but I think the question is, were he ever to get near the White House, what would be those conflicts? Who does he owe money to? Well, he owes you the answers to that, and he should provide them. He also, he also raised the issue of your emails. Do you want to respond to that? I do. You know, I made a mistake using a private email. That's for sure. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Um, but I'm not going to make any excuses. It was a mistake, and I take responsibility for that. Mr. Trump? That was more than a mistake. That was done purposely, okay? That was not a mistake. That was done purposely. When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth so they're not prosecuted, when you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. And believe me, this country thinks it's disgraceful. It really thinks it's disgraceful also. As far as my tax returns, you don't learn that much from tax returns, that I can tell you. You learn a lot from financial disclosure. And you should go down and take a look at that. The other thing, I'm extremely underleveraged. Uh, the report that said 650, which, by the way, a lot of friends of mine that know my business said, boy, that's really not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money relative to what I had. The buildings that were in question, they said in the same report, which was actually it wasn't even a bad story, to be honest with you, but the buildings are worth $3.9 billion. And the 650 isn't even on that. But it's not 650. It's much less than that. But I could give you a list of banks. I would, if that would help you, I would give you a list of banks. These are very fine institutions, very fine banks. I could do that very quickly. I am very under leveraged. I have a great company. I have a tremendous income. And the reason I say that is not in a braggadocious way. It's because it's about time that this country had somebody running it that has an idea about money. When we have $20 trillion in debt and our country's a mess, you know, it's one thing to have $20 trillion in debt and our roads are good and our bridges are good and everything's in great shape, our airports. Our airports are like from a third world country. You land at LaGuardia, you land at Kennedy, you land at LAX, you land at Newark, and you come in from Dubai and Qatar and you see these incredible, you come in from China, you see these incredible airports, and you land, we become a third world country. So. The worst of all things has happened. We owe $20 trillion, and we're a mess. We haven't even started. And we've spent $6 trillion in the Middle East, according to a report that I just saw, whether it's six or five, but it looks like it's six. Six trillion dollars in the Middle East. We could have rebuilt our country twice. And it's really a shame. And it's politicians like Secretary Clinton that have caused this problem. Our country has tremendous problems. We're a debtor nation, we're a serious debtor nation, and we have a country that needs new roads, new tunnels, new bridges, new airports, new schools, new hospitals, and we don't have the money because it's been squandered on so many of your ideas. Let's respond and maybe and we'll because you haven't paid any federal income tax for a lot of years. And the other thing I think is important It would be squandered too, believe me. If, you're, if your main claim to be president of the United States is your business, then I think we should talk about that. You know, your campaign manager said that you built a lot of businesses on the backs of little guys. And indeed, I have met a lot of the people who were stiffed by you and your businesses, Donald. I've met dishwashers, painters, architects, glass installers, marble installers, drapery installers, like my dad was, who you refused to pay when they finished the work that you asked them to do. We have an architect in the audience who designed one of your clubhouses at one of your golf courses. It's a beautiful facility. It immediately was put to use, and you wouldn't pay what the man needed to be paid what he was charging you Maybe he do. didn't do a good job, and I was well, unsatisfied do, with his work, thousands, which our country do the, should do, do too. the thousands of people that you have stiffed over the course of your business not deserve some kind of apology from someone who has taken their labor, taken the goods that they produced, 
and then refuse to pay them. I can only say that I'm certainly relieved that my late father never did business with you. Uh, he provided a good middle class life for us, but the people he worked for, he expected the bargain to be kept on both sides. And when we talk about your business, you've taken business bankruptcy six times. There are a lot of great business people that have never taken bankruptcy once. You call yourself the king of debt. You talk about leverage. You even at one time suggested that you would try to negotiate down the Wrong. national debt of the Wrong. United States. Well, sometimes there's not a direct transfer of skills from business to government, but sometimes what happened in business would be really bad for government. That's what Mr. And Trump we need so, yeah, to I think be it's, very I do clear think it's about that. Look, it's all words, it's all sound bites. I built an unbelievable company, some of the greatest assets anywhere in the world, real estate assets anywhere in the world, beyond the United States, in Europe, lots of different places. It's an unbelievable company. But on occasion, four times, we used certain laws that are there. And when Secretary Clinton talks about people that didn't get paid, First of all, they did get paid a lot, but taking advantage of the laws of the nation. Now, if you want to change the laws, you've been there a long time, change the laws. But I take advantage of the laws of the nation because I'm running a company. My obligation right now is to do well for myself, my family, my employees, for my companies. And that's what I do. But what she doesn't say is the tens of thousands of people that are unbelievably happy and that love me. I'll give you an example. We're just opening up on Pennsylvania Avenue, right next to the White House. So if I don't get there one way, I'm gonna to get to Pennsylvania Avenue another. But we're opening the old post office. Under budget, ahead of schedule, saved tremendous money. I'm a year ahead of schedule. And that's what this country should be doing. We build roads and they cost two and three and four times what they're supposed to cost. We buy products for our military and they come in at costs that are so far above what they were supposed to be because we don't have people that know what they're doing. When we look at the budget, the budget is bad to a large extent because we have people that have no idea as to what to do and how to buy. The Trump International is way under budget and way ahead of schedule. And we should be able to do that for our well, country. Well, we're well behind schedule.